Welcome back everyone, Dan here, and welcome back to this series of videos where I am giving out some very, very basic tips and tricks to uh, those of you who may be considering starting out in flight simulators for the very first time. You have no knowledge of flight, no knowledge of using flight simulators, and I just want to give you some, some stuff that you can use to make the experience more fun um, so that you don't turn away from flight sims. What, what commonly happens with flight sims is people with no experience of flight, like myself when I started, and still I have no real experience of flight. Um, they hop into a flight sim and it's, it's kind of hard to fly and it's just not an overall pleasant experience. So my aim here is to send out some information that you guys can use to make the experience more fun so you can continue to fly and learn along the way as you go and not just give up on flight sims. I am in no way a pilot. I am not trying to teach you how to fly. I am simply giving you some little tricks and tools that I have found and learned along the way to teach you how to simulate flying, but it may not be in the correct way. I just want to get that disclaimer out there. I am not a pilot. I do not know how to technically fly. I just, I'm a casual gamer when it comes to flight sims, and I would like to help out someone else that may want to be a casual uh, flight simmer. So if you want to see some other videos in this series, I will have them on my channel. This is going to be a bunch of shorter videos, all, you know, each one of the videos is going to be aimed at one thing in specific. So check out that playlist. I'll have a playlist where you can see all that stuff. Uh, all of the videos I make are going to be specific to X-Plane 11. This is X-Plane 11. The reason is because X-Plane 11 is my flight sim of choice, and I have used them all over the years. For me, flight uh, X-Plane 11 is the best flight simulator that there is. Um, and I do recommend it for your first sim. And if you're curious exactly why I think that, the very first video in this series will give you that answer. You can go check that out. Today's video, though, is going to be a plugin that I want to show you guys that I definitely think you should add in. Now, this is a little bit different than the typical plugin that I'll tell you about in this series uh, because this one is not free. You can, you can download the demo to see if you like it, but to have all of its features, uh, you should buy it, and it is 25 euros. And what I wanna tell you guys is it's well worth the money, okay? Because one of the hardest things when you're, when you're new, especially in a flight sim, Anybody can get in the plane, give it some throttle, getting up, get it up in the air and fly around for a little bit. But figuring out where to go is difficult, especially if you're going on a long flight, like state to state flights that take hours at a time. How do you really know if you're not an experienced pilot, how do you know where to fly or where to tell your uh, autopilot to go? You don't. And so that's a big thing that bothered me to begin with. So this is a hugely useful tool for only 25 euros. That's probably about 30 US dollars. It's well worth it. And I think you should pick it up. So let me show you the plugin really quick. Um, so it's going to be, once you get it installed, it's going to be plugins. And the name of it is a good way, right? So we're going to go to flight plan. Okay. So what good way is is it's a link to X-Plane, a plugin for X-Plane, which will allow you to type in your starting point and your destination point, and it will automatically create your flight plan for you. There's no work. Only thing you have to know is where you're starting from and where you want to go, and it will automatically create the flight plan uh, based on some vi different variables that you can choose that are very easy to figure out. Um, so this is very cool because this is going to allow you to know where you're going once you get up in the air. And that's, that's a big part of why I think people quit using flight sims very early in their flight sim career. So I'm going to show you, before we go any further with this, I'm going to show you really quick where to get this from and how to download it, and it won't take but a second. So I'm going to put the link in the description below. What happened there? Did that go away? Okay, there we go. Sorry. Something, my computer did not like something I did. But uh, where you're going to go is uh, www.xpgoodway.com. Like I said, the link will be in the description. It's going to bring you to this page here. Um, and what you're going to want to do is download the last version, which is this button here. Of course, that's only going to give you a demo unless you actually register it. I highly recommend you register it and purchase the 25 euro 
full license to get all of the features out of this thing. But of course, try the demo first, see if you like it. Um, but you're gonna click on this button. It's gonna bring a regular archive folder, just like anything you've ever used before. You're gonna download that. When it downloads that, you're going to um, use WinRAR, that's what I use or whatever, because um, you can convert that file out of a zip. It's gonna be a zip file. You wanna unzip it, obviously. I'm not gonna do that here, I've already done that. But once you do unzip it, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to um, wherever your uh, wherever your X-Plane folder is located. Since I have a bunch of games, so I have multiple drives that hold my games through Steam. So in, I know that my X-Plane drive is actually on my E, not my C, but it may be on C for you. So I'm gonna go to my Steam folder on my E drive. You go to Steam, uh, then you're going to go to Steam Apps. Then you're going to go to Common. Here are the games that I have on this drive. One of them being X-Plane 11. We're going to go to X-Plane 11. Uh, and then we're going to go to Resources. And we're going to go to Plugins. And all you do, guys, is after you've unzipped that file, it's going to give you a folder that looks like this. Good way. You're going to drop that folder into here. Then you're going to get out of here. And next time you load up X-Plane, uh, this will be ready for you to use. So we're gonna head back over to X-Plane. So there, this is a pretty big tool. There's a lot of things that you can do with it, but I think for, for a beginner who I'm aiming this video at, the only thing you're really gonna do here is you're gonna create a flight plan and you're gonna let this tool send that flight plan to your GPS system, which is this right here, okay? Um, <clears throat> so basically, what you're gonna do, guys, is you're gonna click this button. This will bring up this little tool that allows you to make a flight plan. I know I started us out just outside of Dallas. Uh, actually, before we do this, here are some options, right? You can punch this in manually, but uh, if you get a tool like this, I'm not sure why you would punch in a flight plan manually. This tool in itself is so you don't have to manually punch in a flight plan. So you're gonna use more than likely the automatic tab. There's some choices on airways, whether you wanna fly high and low altitudes or just low altitudes or just high altitudes. Um, as a beginner, I don't really think it's gonna matter typically. Um, Typically, I'll either pick VFR, Free Fly, or SID and Star. Um, and actually, most of the time, I use SID and Star. You'll see that that grays out the VIA points, VIA2 and VIA from. The reason why it does that is because what it's going to do is if you just put in your current position, your current airport that you're at, and where you want to go, it's going to create this as if it was going to send you the same direction and the same flight path that an actual pilot would go. If you turn off SID and STAR, it's just gonna be a really straight flight path from what I can understand. Now again, guys, I'm not a pilot, so I don't know that for sure, but from my experiences, I've tested this out a lot, that's what it seems to be. SID and STAR, if you had that turned on, it's gonna send you to, let's say you're going to Las Vegas, it's gonna go to Las Vegas via the standard uh, path that someone would fly from here to Las Vegas. Whereas if you don't have that turned on, it's just going to be like a straight line for the most part. So I know we are at, let's get back to this part. I know because I looked it up, we are at uh, KDFW and we want to fly to a airport in New Orleans, which is KNEW. Uh, again, if you saw my last video, how I get these airport codes is I use the very powerful and useful tool, Gateway Scenery Map. You can go back and check out that video if you haven't seen it yet. It's very helpful. And then you just basically click Create. And it takes a couple of seconds, and it creates your flight plan. Now here is the flight plan. That's what we're going to follow. Um, now we're going to click on this little globe here, and what that is going to show us is a virtual map of where we're starting from. I'm actually gonna turn all these off for now, everything off but the airports. So this is a virtual map uh, of where we're starting from and where we're going. Like I said, if you didn't, if you had SID and STAR turned off, this would be a virtually just a straight line from straight from Dallas to New Orleans. But you can see there's some slight bends in here. It's not much, but this is gonna be your actual flight path that you would follow if you were flying this in real world. 
Uh, as far as I can tell, guys, I'm not a pilot, but I believe that's the way it works. Anyways, you can zoom in and out of this map. This is a really, really helpful map. One thing I want to show you, though, is you'll see that this is our airport. This is our ending point. If we just allow the GPS to follow this line all the way to the airport, you can see we're not going to be lined up with the runways. Here's 18 left and 18R. This is probably where you're going to want to land, one of these two runways. We're in a small plane, so we, plane, so we can land on 18 left or 18 right. But I don't want to have to make that choice when I get here. So the cool thing about this tool is you, you can customize this. Now that the flight plan is written and you've got this map, I know I would rather come out here and swing wide and come straight in to the runway because that would be easier for me. So there's a cool, very useful feature here. I am not a pilot, so I don't know what all these things are, guys, but I know as you click these buttons, it adds stuff to the map, okay? So that one didn't there, but there's all these little points of interest that are called various, I think some of them are called VORs, and I just don't know enough about flying to know that stuff. What I do know, and what you're going to care about as a beginner, is as you turn these things off, those are points that you can snap your flight path to. If you click this little pencil button, you can click anywhere on this line and you can start moving it around. The thing is it will not snap to anywhere. Let's say I want to snap it to right here. When I let go, it brings back the original path. That's because there's no point of interest to tell the flight plan of the flight planner to use, right? So it's not going to snap to anything. So if these are turned off, you've got nothing but airports and helicopter pads to use to move. So if you turn on these little snaps here, it gives you these VOR, VORs and various things to use. So I know I need to come in from up here somewhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this snap tool. I'm going to grab this line, and I think somewhere up here is probably going to be good. Now that's going to get me straighter and getting to my airport, right? So I'll make this turn. But this is a pretty harsh turn, and I'm not sure that there's enough room here to make this turn and then straighten back up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab it again. I'm going to actually go to my pan tool. I'm going to pan us out a little bit more so I can see more. And then I'm going to grab this and probably snap it here and then go up to that. Right? So what we're going to do is we're going to now, instead of, and I dropped my keyboard, sorry, but as instead of going in that straight line where we're not lined up with that runway, what we're going to do here, and again, I don't know if this is technically correct in the real world, but as a fun flight sim and as a beginner and as somebody who's just interested in playing a game, what that's going to do is that's going to get us here and it's going to kind of turn us back northeast. And then we're going to start a very gradual, slow turn to line us up with the airport that we're going to. And it, I don't know if you noticed this, you probably should have, but as I was moving this line around, things are changing in this flight plan. So that's basically what you do. You can grab whatever you want to change this flight plan to see what you, whatever you want to see, if you want to go over a different town to make it longer, shorter, or if it's just as simple as what we did here, just lining us up with the actual runway we want to land on, you can do that too. And as you do all that stuff, it changes here. Once you have got this, and we can, we can turn the map off for now, but once you've got this the way you want it, then all you're going to do is you're going to click this button, and you're going to send it to the GPS GNS. That's going to be whatever, <coughs> excuse me, that's going to be whatever GPS system is in the plane you're flying as long as it is equipped with one. That's going to be 90% of the planes in X-Plane. For example, this plane uses the X-Plane Garmin 1000. So if you click this, you see it said flight plan sent to GPS. And now if we pull the GPS up here, where well, there was nothing before, if I now click flight plan, you're going to see that this is the flight plan that is on so what I'll do here is check this out. We'll bring this down so you can see that a little better. But this is the same thing. Okay? So, uh, uh, solo, I think this is oh, S-O-L-D-O -O to L-S-U to 9-L-A-G. You know, I don't, honestly, I don't know what any of this stuff really is. But I know that now that I've got this into this GPS 
and into my flight plan and it did it automatically that once I get up in the air using this tool and I turn on my autopilot, the plane is going to follow this precisely and I didn't have to punch it in manually. Even if I purposely turn off autopilot and get off track to go look at something else, when I turn the autopilot back on, it will go back to this flight plan. So it's it, the tool is powerful and it does more stuff, but I think to begin with, guys, the main thing you're going to do with it here is you're going to, um, and I'll go back, we'll just, just for the heck of it, just so I'll bring, the main thing you're going to do here is you're going to type in where you're starting from and where you're going and you're going to click create and let it create a flight plan and then you're going to send it to your GPS. That's basically what you're going to do with this tool and as you learn more and more, you can adjust you know, altitudes that you want to fly and stuff like that. And you can, you can make changes to the flight plan, but this is going to be a very resourceful tool to help you get from where you are to where you want to go without getting lost. And I'm telling you, if you're able to, to take off in a flight sim, fly for a little bit in a flight sim, and then land where you want to go, your experience of flight sims change dramatically because now it gives you an extra just, you know, a sense of completion because anybody can take a, take off in a flight sim, fly around and then start back over. You know what I mean? But completing a flight in a flight sim, especially if it was your very first time is very cool. And that may sound silly, but it is, it's very, very cool. And if you're a beginner, you have to have something like this flight plan tool. And I've used a bunch of them and this one is the best. The last thing I'm gonna to touch on is the other thing that you can use this map for here. Let me turn off all these points of interest, except for the airports, is if you start your flight, we are, I believe we're that one there. Yeah, we're gonna the orange. This is gonna be traffic in the area, guys, and that traffic will move around as these planes take off and leave the airport and get on the runway. But you're gonna be this little orange one. What you can do is zoom in here, guys, and you can use this map to figure out how to get from where you are and taxi to the runway that you wanna take off from because your little orange plane will move around as you are driving around on the ground. So I know that's not the correct way professional pilots do it, but it is helpful for a new person. Uh, you can also zoom out very quickly and kind of look at other airports in the area. Um, however, I do pr not prefer, but I, I prefer for myself, but I recommend that you use the gateway scenery map for that because it's going to give you a little more information. But Together, those two tools work great. But yeah, I really uh, highly recommend that you check this tool out because it is, it's awesome. It really works well, especially for a beginner. It helps you get where you're going. And again, that's called the Goodway app. So that's going to be it for this one. I think I touched on everything dealing with the Goodway map, uh, a Goodway uh, flight plan editor, excuse me. Um, and then as you get further along and more, and you learn more about, you know, uh, flight simming in the, you know, in general, you can utilize these tools even more and more, but, uh, that's what it's going to be for to begin with as a beginner. So that's going to be it for this one, guys. Uh, and it actually ran a little long, like I always does with my videos, but thanks so much. If you joined in for the entire thing, as always, I appreciate you watching. Make sure to check out the other tips, tricks, and tutorial videos that I have for explain 11 and flight sims in general. I'm going to end it here on this and I will talk to you in the next one. We'll see you later.